So, wow, this is quite an event, isn't it? Yes. You know, I've been saying very un Hitachi like, you know, this is great marketing here. It's, you don't really expect that from Hitachi, but we've, we've sort of seen a transformation here, haven't we? Well, I, I think a bunch of, of companies are having to go through transformation in the storage industry. I mean, if, if part of the whole message is that it's, it's not just a sort of standalone device, a peripheral, but it's part of your data center solution, you know, you really got to send the message that you're a full partner in, in, in the data center. And that includes being a lot more visible about customers and use cases and, and all the other pieces that go with it. You're seeing a real transformation in the industry. I mean, it's, you know, we always talk about transformation, but this really feels like it truly is one, with whether it's cloud and VMware and virtualization. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you seeing, Laura? Well, I mean, I think the thing that HDS has gotten right, um, maybe more so than their peers, is as the data center is transforming, it's also the IT domain that's going through a transformation as well. So certainly, you know, as data centers move to become more virtualized, more scale out, um, architectures as service automation becomes more of a critical role. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please return to increasingly, the, the IT department the is being asked is to manage resilient. more than just the please infrastructure. And the thing the that I think HDS has Thank gotten you exactly right is it's now about managing the information and you know they have a lot of capabilities that help them in that front um, we still have a long way to go as an industry but I think that's a differentiator for HDS relative to this whole data center transition. It is different than what you hear from a lot of other other suppliers. We were at Oracle Open World yeah. last week and the message is we, we want to own everything we, ha we have to own the data, own the database, own the infrastructure and HDS taking a little different approach. Laura you said it just manage it mm -hmm. you know, in a more facile approach. So what's your take on this announcement, Laura, from a software standpoint? You're a software expert. You, you see all the different players out there. What, what's, what are the highlights from a software perspective here? Yeah, well, I mean, I think certainly their, um, their page or record level um, automated tiering is a, a, a differentiation for them, a, is a compelling capability, but their whole unified management strategy. I mean, and storage software is really going through a transformation from a, you, we see consolidation of the storage management layer and the device management layer, and really what that means is things like uh, automation are increasingly more important, things like unified management across different platforms, or across different data types is more important, and um, and so their whole unified approach, unified management approach, I think, is really um, you know a key component for their software strategy. And you know they've added enhancements around things like you know installation and improved workflows and wizards, um, but but really the unified approach I think is, is is right on the mark, in particular as it relates to this data center transformation and the need to take that uh, unified management, integrate it up into higher levels of the infrastructure stack. Yeah, I was impressed with the unified story. You know you. I, you don't expect big Hitachi OLTP to be talking about mm. sort of that unified approach. And right. I, I think that's a differentiator, don't you, don't you Rick? Um, I, I do think that is, is one of the areas where they've, they've needed to work to, to actually increase their vision. So you um, think they were a little bit behind there and needed um, to catch up? Is I'm not sure they were behind technically. The, ch uh -huh. the challenge, of course, is being part of the unified message. And being in the game. Yeah, and, and yeah. clearly, you know, the messaging we've seen on the unified side, while well, you know, server virtualization, full props for getting people to start thinking about it, is it was much more of a, a uh, you know, full Ladies systems and data center. Please take your seats. And, the program um, is about to resume. Unifying there. Please I, take your I, seats. I think you know, Hitachi you. has now put together, it's not just that we're talking the game, but here's our design points. You know, we, we recognize that efficiency just doesn't just mean the software and the thin provision it means you actually start designing systems that are more efficient to deploy and manage and run and operate at the hardware level too. So, so I think they're they're listening to the full message and, and being part of the unified story from that standpoint. Are you guys you hear a lot of talk about silos and information yeah. silos and infrastructure silos and application silos? Uh, with the users that you talk to, are the silos starting to come down, or is that still a big impediment to progress uh, around? virtualized infrastructure. What, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's changing, but I think it's evolutionary. I don't think it's like stair step functions. I think it's slow change over time, but I do think it's starting to change. Um, you know, one of the customers that we just talked to uh, in, in the one of the keynotes um, there had talked about, you know, his goal is to try and eliminate his silos and not to just do things like tiering within the box, but across the box and mm -hmm. ultimately tier across the data center. So those are some of the high level objectives, but there's a lot Who of like... Who does tiering in the box? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know... Who's he talking about? Uh, um, 
you know, so there's certainly a lot of legacy infrastructure out there, and so it's going to be, you know, a, an evolutionary process. That's my take on it. Yeah. I don't Rick, know. Rick, we, we used to, yeah. when, we, when I was at IDC, you were a networking expert, and now you've come, come to the storage side, which is timely, right, because you're seeing all this talk about convergence. Mm-hmm. You know, what's, so yeah. what's your take on, on, on the silos and convergence and the whole well, networking and storage thing coming well, together? I, I do think one of them, and it has been <coughs> building over the last five, six years, and I, and I did join the, the, the storage team at IDC partly to deal with how is networking going to change the world of storage. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, what, what it's done is, is say, so storage is now a more independent activity. It's, it's, and it is that transition from storage to information management. That what we're really trying to say here, and, and this is almost the new silo, is I have a group of people whose their job is to make sure that the information is, you know, captured, is protected, is made available, and is you know archived over the long term. And that's really their job. It's not to provision a disk drive or provision a LUN behind some application. So I, I think that's the sort of new vision. What convergence is about is to get them out of that other job, out of the sort of point and click and rebuild and reset everything. Storage has it, network has it, servers have it, even the applications have it. I think we want to tear the silos down at that level. But I think you are seeing, I don't want to call it a silo, but, but two new use cases. One is information, is clearly that information-centric workload. Um, there's cl- obviously the classic transaction-centric workload, and, and, and definitely Oracle and Oracle World, what they were talking about is that's not going away, and mm-hmm. that's a specialty area, and, and you want to at least think about how you're doing that effectively. I think the interesting third one is, is, is compute, is analytics. Um, and mm. and that, big that data. side is uh, big data, but big data processing, I want to crunch it often and frequently to do something with it. And and part of the challenge for the storage industry is is to basically say, we're the ones who are tasked with ultimately protecting the information across those three different silos, archive, compute, transaction, and managing the movement of data between those pools of compute resource or, 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 or storage resource. That's going to be the interesting development, and and I think some of the things Hitachi's working on here are part of making that their job. So you think the storage guys are going to work for the networking guys eventually? Or? Um, you know, this is that whole cloud debate in a sense of, <laughs> of who works for who. I, I'll be honest in saying I think a lot of the networking guys are going to be a lot busier figuring out how we, you know, support all these you know iPads and smartphones and everything else out there and controlling Good, that keeping side. the hell away from our data. Um, I, I, I think the network inside the data centers evolving into an IO management system. So we may not call them networking companies the way we do today, but it's the people who run and own the IO. So Laura, let's talk a little bit more about this announcement. Uh, even a company that's $97 billion in revenue can't do it all. So I want to talk a little bit about what's missing. Big Rick just mentioned you know, big data. How about data reduction? That's something that I, I, I didn't hear you know, strongly in this announcement, although they do a lot, obviously, with things like thin provisioning or right. what they call HDP, Hitachi Dynamic Provisioning. Do you think that's uh, there's an opportunity there, there's upside there for these guys? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm, I'm sure they have that in their strategy or in their plans, but storage optimization technologies at large are really kind of uh, a c- critical component to storage architecture and purchasing decisions for customers. Uh, because customers are trying to do more with less, right? and trying to scale their storage while keeping their their administration in check. Um, Their budgets aren't scaling with the same level of capacity growth. So optimization has to play a key role. Deduplication is an area where we see, you know, we just saw it, you know, really um, proliferate in the backup space, backup data, archive data. And now we're starting to see it move more into the the primary data, you know, on the file side in particular. Um, So there's certainly an area of opportunity, but it's not, uh, it's not, dedupe isn't the silver bullet. It's in conjunction or in concert with other optimization technologies, thin provisioning, space efficient snapshots, uh, compression technologies. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's certainly an area of opportunity or future expansion. So let's talk about that a little bit more. It really isn't part of this announcement today, but it's an interesting topic. Yeah. I know you have a perspective on it. I'd yeah. be interested in your point of view. I'm sure our listeners would like that. Um, so what does Hitachi do there? Do they partner with like a Falcon store? Mm-hmm. Who I saw yeah. in, in here, That's they're really showing a VTL, but that's a possibility. Do they develop their own? Do they... We had Jack Domain on. It, it did, I didn't get the sense that they were going to go out and make a, you know, a bunch of acquisitions necessarily, but you know, or do they they just roll roll their own in house? Is it yeah. R and D? Is it, are they are they late? Are they too late? Uh, I don't think they're too late. Um, they're certainly later than others. But um, you know, if you look at statistics, our, our research shows that an average of between you know thirty and thirty four percent of of all the total disk storage capacity on the floor is allocated for some kind of backup and recovery function. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a lot of data that continues. Th- 
right, that, that continues to grow and backup is highly redundant. So it's certainly an area of target for DDU. Um, they have a partner. They have a partnership with Falcon Store around uh, deduplication with the Falcon Store VTL. Um, they've also had other relationships. Um, I think data protection and disaster recovery is an area of, of um, further consideration for HDS as it you know evaluates where it wants to be in that in that opportunity. But clearly, there's a lot of opportunity as it relates to selling um, solutions for for those particular uh, workloads, whether that be data protection, disaster recovery, business continuity, archive, uh, and dedupe is uh, you know, a critical component there. But to your point, I think you know, they have historically relied on a lot of partnerships and um, you know, it probably behoove them to, um, to have a more organic approach. But it's not done yet, that whole space. We saw no. SyncSort and NetApp just do a deal. A lot uh, of ac acquisitions going store -wise. on StoreWise. Well, there was an article in Silicon Angle this morning um, about StoreWise, supposedly uh, IBM is dumping the StoreWise brand, mm -hmm. and they're going with real, real-time data compression. Or real-time compression mm -hmm. is is what they're saying. It's very, very IBM-like marketing, I guess. It's <laughs> take the sexy name and call it what it is. <coughs> right. You know. But but you're saying that that whole space, Permabit, you know, Alberio, HP. Yep. Uh, what, what do they call their product? Sure Store. Is it? Right. Or, sure yeah. Store. Yeah. So so you actually are seeing some more innovations there. Sure. So these guys, Hitachi, has some time maybe to. I think so. I think I think it's still early days, in particular as it relates to primary storage. Do you do it for primary storage? Super early days on that front. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity for uh, for innovation there, and you know. Um, some companies have multiple dedupe technologies, right? So you look at IBM, they bought Diligent, and then they bought Storewise. EMC has Avamar and Data Domain, right? So there's a lot of different ways in which to go about re reducing data footprint. Right. So Rick, what, what um, what are you guys telling customers? You know, what's your big advice when you think about this whole cloud convergence, storage oh, yes, changes? Yes. What's the advice to customers? That you um, well, there's there's a couple different layers of it. I mean, obviously at, at this sort of tactical layer, um, one thing that we we clearly do still have to tell customers, and surprisingly, is virtualize your storage. Um, you know, it's it's not just enough to network it. You really do have to put in the facilities to you know do the thin provisioning to 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 make that those moves ads and changes basically transparent um, not just server virtualization oh yeah. think about don't forget the storage absolutely back in. I, okay. I can't tell you the number of people who we talked to three years ago and even today who you know <coughs> if, if they're under if they're less than a year into virtualization they're saying like storage isn't a problem it's there we don't worry about it and then after that you know after they hit that thousandth virtual machine or you know, all of a sudden, it's like storage is the bottleneck. Storage, you know, either we're rebalancing the systems all the time, or the backups are, are blowing up, or you know, we we just don't know how to scale. Um, so you know, doing the full virtualization and recognizing that, that that virtualizing the storage is a key part of it is, is a big part of the message. Um, the other thing we do say at a higher level, and, and we have to go back is this convergence discussion a little bit is is um, you know, you, you really have to rethink a little bit of the IT structure. Um, you know, there clearly is going to be what we'd call the information facilities management team. And today that's the classic IT folks that we think of, admins. They have to evolve, though. You know, their job isn't to configure LUNs or configure servers. It's, it's to really make sure that, you know, you're getting maximum IT load in the smallest footprint and the lowest power. Um, but the new group that's out there is, is once you move to this virtualized model, you know, the people who are building the information services, the ones who actually interact with the business units and say, you know, we're going to deliver you, you know, whether it's, whether it's a collaboration service or whether it's a, you know, a, a decision support application or whether it's a, a new service to your partners. Um, you know, that's the team that's going to have more and more power, more and more influence about IT choices. Um, and, and I think that's, that's sort of the new development. You know, the wild card in this, again, is back to those, you know, the people who are suddenly going to have to figure out then how do we deliver these all to smartphones and iPads. I can't tell you, you know, talking to enough CIOs in the last year, they're saying, you know, we get, we get convergence, we get virtualization, IT efficiency, we got to do all those things, we have a roadmap, you know, we got pieces to work out. What worries me is that five years from now, you know, my primary user interface for all my apps has to be these mobile systems. I don't have a clue how to do the that. The mobile yet. enterprise, yeah. L little data. Absolutely. <laughs> or big data, but delivered in, you know, applets in the app store. So right. um, that's, that's the Right, or even gestural user data that's yep. coming from a device. You, we, you guys must have been at, at mm -hmm. VMworld, right? Yep. Uh, I missed it this year. You did, okay. Yeah. Well, one of the big themes, you, of course, you've heard this is VDI, the virtual yeah. desktop mm -hmm. infrastructure, and that's whole thing shifting to the, yeah. to the device. Well, it's, the not even, user, it's not even VDI anymore. That, yeah. that's, that's sort of laptop and desktop. Yeah, thinking. right. It's, it's, it's really, it's, 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 that's it's, legacy. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's your access manager. 
whatever that device may be, whatever interface, it's it's a lot more, it's bigger than virtual desktops. Right, mm -hmm. right, and you, you really heard that in VMware's messaging, right? They yeah. really didn't use the whole VDI Yeah, that was not as term. commonly mentioned. The so. whole ecosystem yes. did, mm -hmm. because like, Sure. VMware is always you know, ahead of the yep. marketing, right? Yep. And so I think y you're starting to see that that shift, and it needs to, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, yep. let's face it, I'm the only ki guy who carries around a laptop. <laughs> Everybody's well, got iPads. Well, we should do a tally of how many iPads in the HDS senior executives, and yeah. see yeah. where that's going. How about Flash? Is that is that change everything like everybody says it does, or is that just the latest latest fad um, from both the hardware and software yeah. standpoint? Um, well, there's multiple layers here. So, I mean, clearly bringing solid state drives in, into the drive frame in the storage systems is something, you know, was started a couple years ago, but that was mostly to fix point problems. I mean, it's really just now with the transition to SaaS architectures and other pieces and the advent of automated data tiering that you can actually take advantage mm -hmm. of that. I do think that in some ways, though, the more interesting part of Flash right now is not in the classic storage system, but it's showing up, uh, again, closer to the servers or even closer to the VDI devices. Like you a Fusion I.O. approach? Well, Fusion I.O., but also, you know, things like, uh, what is it, Fast Cache. I always get, you know, the multiple systems out there. Or even what, what Oracle well, is. So what's Fast Cache? I think what's that's it? the NetApp. Yeah. Um, but if you really think At about the those, system level. Yes. Well, yeah, okay. they're, they're caching for specific types of data. And, and one of the classic things that we ran into in VDI and also in big data centers with virtual servers is the the boot problem is dr if you know that that one time the whole system goes down you know how much time is it going to take me to reload ten thousand virtual ma machine images um and so or, or now let's do it every day at nine o'clock mm -hmm. when when everybody logs on so they're starting to say let's take you know it's a highly deduplicate highly you know replicated data set um bottle only 98 percent the same data for every single one you know, that shouldn't just be, let's not put that in the standard storage system. Let's put out a cache that's really good at managing those at, those image assets. And there where you get a lot faster response time and performance on those kind of loads. I think you're seeing that show up in analytics apps, seeing that show up in other places. So this use of, it's not tier zero and it's not main memory. It's sort of this scratch capacity in the middle of your converged pool is the next interesting development. You just have to make sure that that data does get staged to the storage at the end of the day. Is that a big enabler or driver, Laura, on the storage software side? Is that what's driving a lot of the tiering or is it just really ne the need for generalized efficiency initiatives? Well, I think we're seeing it you know, being driven by um, isolated areas of performance improvement. Um, and we have started to see um, some some slow material impacts on the storage software front. Um, in particular, you know, and as an example, you know, EMC has done very well with some of their fast V2 uh, um, capabilities, and, and, and very well. It's off a small base, right? So it's still got a ways to go. But that's the sublun stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sublun migration, yeah. And um, and you know, I think that's um, important, and the ability to do this migration between tiers is important. But it really has to be in the context of some content, some information. And so bringing it back to, I think, Hitachi's sort of vision and objective is really to manage manage infrastructure given information policies. And I think that's ultimately where this needs to go, is, is not just management and migration of data um, at a physical level, you know, LUN, sub-LUN, page, record level, but but based upon a business role and a business policy. And, you know, we're well, obviously a ways away from that, but but I think that's ultimately where it gets really interesting from a software perspective. So data classification, mm. policy mm -hmm. engine. Yep. So Jack talked a little bit about that, at least conceptually, mm -hmm. but, but it sounds like it's got a long long way to go in terms of upside potential. <coughs> I think so. Well, you, because you have the challenge there is otherwise you got to go back and tell everybody to redevelop their apps on well, a whole new architecture. And that's just not going to happen that much for some cases yes but for the most part yeah there's got to be a big value prop for them to do that right, right. And, and in some use cases that, that yeah. there, there may be yeah, there, um, but. if you, if you want to develop in ruby on rails and hadoop go ahead but you know that's not exactly the traditional uh, application base out there I, and i think the value prop is in the data mining and data analytics space being able to do something with this information that's just growing staler over time and the value proposition in addition to the data mining and data analytics side where you can actually mine the data and reuse it for some business value is also risk mitigation so managing information according to compliance rules
And that's always been a big theme with CIOs, right? I mean, CIOs think about risk first and then then it's okay. Where's the business value and, yeah. and how do I pay for it? Yeah, I mean, 10 <laughs> years from now, everything that's done at the infrastructure level is going to be time-stamped, documented, monitored, um, and there's going to be a chain of custody around any, everything that happens in the infrastructure. Yes, yeah, so you guys produce that study every year. I think John Gantz does that digital universe study. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to do it next year. John, as I understand, semi-retired. Right, is right. that right? And uh, that's quite, a, quite an undertaking. And um, wait, wait, do, do we have data? Do you guys have data on how fast storage is growing? Is that something like a, a fun fact that you have at your, your fingertips? I'm always hearing people quote you on that, and, the, and it's all over the place. Yeah. You know? It's got to be a hard thing to track. And, uh, well, but you guys have well, the, well, there, there's multiple the visibility ways, yeah. of the factory and yeah. the demand. You do a lot of surveys. Well, I mean, we do keep track of the disk drives going out the door. Yeah, right. Uh, so that's something we have a lot of presence on. And we do track even you know the disk drives going into enterprise systems versus going into your PC. So how should we be looking um, at data growth? These well, days? that that's a that's a different question because <coughs> you know we just talked about deduplication and we've talked about thin provisioning. In some ways, um, you know, data is growing faster than the storage by mm -hmm. far. Um, even inside enterprises, it's it's more about again if it's the same data twenty times, let's use something so I don't need so much right. storage. Uh, I think that's what people have woken up to is is. Um, you know, you have to be smarter about the storage load in it. Now, having said that, you know, you know, there's still a lot of inefficiency in it. Uh, so, I mean, we're seeing that on average, companies' capacity growth <coughs> is goes up is, is around 50 percent. Mm -hmm. It was down obviously last year, but it was still over 33 percent on a per terabyte basis. Um, and you know, this year is coming back strong and looks like it'll be well easily in that base. Um, over 50, maybe over even 50. over 60. The problem we run into, and this is for us is the issue, is that that's a great measure if you're ca tracking x-rays or, or you know, um, MP3 downloads. But if what you're really trying to track is, you know, those transactions or those data analytic things, is people actually don't need the capacity. Yeah. What they need are the IOs. And in the past, the way you got IOs was you bought a lot more disk and you short stroked them and you were wasting 90% of the load. So with solid state disk, you know, you're looking at I.O. And, and I think this is one of the challenges for a lot of, 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 of you know, uh, CIOs and, and storage admins is we actually have to figure out a way to stop just tracking dollar per gig for evaluating products. We have to find a better way to do dollar per I.O. So as for a lot of the use cases, it's, it's really about the I.O. The, you know, the, the amount of data, the <coughs> new data those systems generate may is only, is only growing at 10, 15 percent a year. But I'm growing the capacity 50% because that's the only way I can get the I.O. Right. That can't continue. And that changes the dialogue between the storage administrators and the app admin, right? It's not about capacity. It's about what are your I.O. requirements. And it begins to become much more of an SLA-driven discussion. Excellent. We're here at the Cube live at the uh, Hitachi Information Forum with Laura Dubois and Rick Villers of IDC. Um, talking about data growth and the, the Hitachi announcement and your guys' perspective on the industry, anything anything hot that you want to want to tell the audience about? You got any new studies you're working on, or <laughs> any stuff you want to sell? <laughs> Now's your chance. You know, let's pump you guys up, right? You're doing, doing a great job out there, IDC. Number one, market data, and uh, what do you guys? How many analysts are you up to now? Do you? Do you have a fun fact there? No? What, within the company worldwide? Yeah, worldwide. Oh, yeah. I don't know. A thousand? A thousand or so? Wow. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. It's a lot yeah, of brain power. Thousands, so, hundreds, um, so, well, guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE and, uh, and sharing your insights with our audience. It was great to have you. Great. great. Thanks so much. Thanks. All, right. All right. Thanks.